Right, back to XK Power Jaguars and a glorious Mark 1 here. RM for Raymond Mays. Here we've got a glorious pre-war Riley. Triumph 2000 Mark II, quite an early Mark II. We've got an Austin 8 Tilly. What an incredible car that is. Well, morning folks, welcome to Old Classic Car and we're back down at Bista Heritage for the Sunday Scramble. It is April 2023, if you're a regular, a long termer on the channel, then you'll know we do like this event a lot. We were down here in January and that was also slightly overcast and a little bit damp in the air, but never mind, who cares, there's some fantastic cars here. Um, I'm, just, I'm sure we're going to see some real gems here today down at the Sunday Scramble. This is held several times throughout the year. Check out the Bista Heritage website for details of future events. But let's go and have a look and see what's here today. It's also Drive It Day 2023, so uh, we're expecting a bumper turnout of really great cars. And I can already see plenty already over there in the public parking area. It's not even nine o'clock yet. Let's go and have a look in the public car parking area. There are still cars pouring in, but no doubt we'll revisit here before the day is through. There's my youthful assistant is with me today. Morning. Morning indeed, yes. Right, let's go and have a quick shift. Oh, I like this six volt Beetle. Wow, look how original that is. No, I do like that. Nice old number plates as well. The ace plates, I would guess. Yeah. I always find myself drawn towards vehicles. I've, I've not seen those before. Beetle indicators, uh, trafficators. The old semaphore pop-up indicators. That's nice, I like that. Now we do have to watch, there's some music playing on the PA over down there near the control tower. So uh, for copyright reasons, we have to be a little bit wary of that. Ferrari 412's just starting up. V12 front engine Ferrari. We like those, as we do like these. BMW 2002 Turbo, it's been a while since I've seen one of these. Someone's got music playing over there from their car, so we're gonna have to try and avoid that if I can. Yeah, that's a very, very cool car. Look at that on the back, a radio control one as well. Wow. Little two CV van here, is this the AK400? I think they call these. Right, let's carry on up here away from the music, from the tunes. 205 Rally. MGB Roadster. VW, uh, is that the Trekker? <laughs> wonder where that was found. An Alpha GTV, is this the V6 or the, t or the four cylinder car? Or was the GTV6, the two and a half litre V6 engine? Left hand drive. Fiat 124 Spider. Is it in a bath with a black bonnet? Next to the Fiat, a lovely 3.8 litre Jaguar Mark II 1965. A belt of that is Coombs cutaway rear arches as well. We like that. A nice doggy in this Golf. What do we have here? Is it a Monza? Certainly looks like one. Another 2002 BMW on period alley wheels. Are those Alpine? And maybe I'm not sure. But uh, great looking car, Toyota. 
3 Series, an E21 3 Series, a 323i, the twin headlights either side, that's usually the giveaway that it's a 6 cylinder 323i and a gorgeous 3 litre, one of the E9 coupes. Mm, we like. Complete with a wing over the rear window. You don't see these Alphas too often now. Is this the Alfetta? I think. I should have really had a look at the back before I started filming, but yes, there we go. It's a rare old survivor. Left hand drive, wood rim steering wheel in the proper Alpha way. Yeah. There's not many of those left. Just notice that nice mirror. Proper Italian mirror with Alpha branding on it. The devil's in the detail. Lovely MGC here, big straight six there. Triple SU carburetors. What a beautifully turned out engine that is. Whew. Bay window. These golfs, a couple of these golfs passed us on the way in just now. I'll probably never be able to cover all of the cars here today at Sunday Scramble, Bista Heritage, April 2023, but we'll certainly do our best between us, Harley's doing a video for his car traction channel and we're here on the old classic car channel just looking at some of the early arrivals here today like i say it's also drive it day today which is a good thing so that should even boost the numbers of classic and vintage cars even more lovely 911 very smart indeed the 105 series alpha which one is this a gtv yep so that's what, a 1750 or a 2000 GTV. Again, very nice mirrors, same manufacturer, Marini. Yeah, it's a 1750, that one debumpered, very fruity looking exhaust on the back as well. Very, very nice indeed. It's amazing how the gear lever sticks out almost from under the dashboard. Right, let's keep going. Away from the music, Porsche 944, very original looking Moggy van, well it's an Austin van, this is one of the, the rare Austin badged versions with the wavy crinkly Austin grille. A Rover 95 for sale, what's the diesel, 11250, very tidy indeed. A lovely phase one vanguard over there. I think we'll go and have a shift at that in a minute. Rally prepared escort. Another E21 3 series, or is that the. No, this is a different one, isn't it? There's that 323i over there somewhere. I can just see it. Well, this is an Alpina C1, a 2.3. Talking of classic BMWs, we've got another E9 coupe. Lovely metallic green one. What a beautiful car there. These 2002s are just such such cool cars, I think. And the turbo, that's a proper rarity. An E30 M3. One of those rare sports hatch. I think they call this one of the Droop Snoot cars. Someone local to us has got a pair of these that he owns. A very, very dark maroon colour. It looks black from a distance, but it is actually maroon. I thought it might have been his car at first because he's got one of these and he's also got one of the coupes. Which we'll just see if we go around here. So a pair of Droop Snoot Vauxhalls. Wow, they're rare. Uh, 2.3 litre if memory serves. Really nice 2CV there. And another 105 Series Alfa Romeo on the end of the row here. It's a 2000 on an M plate. Fairly late one. Such a swish little car. The variety of cars here at Bista Heritage is just incredible. Got a 123 Series Mercedes Coupe, they're nice. A Senator, is that? Fintail Mercedes. 
great collection of badges on the front of this one as well. <laughs> Very nice. Light still on. An SL. And there's that wonderful Vanguard Phase 1. Wow, that's an early one. You can tell the very early ones are phase ones, they have a slightly different bonnet line, but more importantly they've got the narrow slatted grille, that's the, the easiest way of spotting them. The phase 1A had a slightly chunkier chrome grille, still with the beetle back styling and the rear spats. Yeah. What a great early 1950s car, so what's that about 49 or 1950, 51, somewhere like that. I think by 1952 they'd gone to the phase 1A with a different grille, still like I say, with this beetle back styling, and the phase two came along, similar front end, but with a proper sort of stepped boot on it. But yeah, what a beauty that is. What a rare cavalier here. With these dealer fit, all these stripes down the side, and two toning. I certainly don't remember ever seeing one like that back in the day, even. Hey, oh, okay, we've got a Triumph Stag now. Lovely V8 Triumph Stag Mark II, alley wheels, stainless covers on the sills. That makes it a Mark II, I think, with hardtop. This one, very nice looking car. The hardtops really do suit them. You can't always say that about old cars. What a beautiful V8 Ford! Oh, wow, that's an eye catching thing. The grille. It's very much like an upscaled version of the E83W grille, but this is very much American in origin. Quite modified. A huge turbo lurking under the bonnet there. What's that doing there? <laughs> That's a very big turbo. It's got to be a modern engine, isn't it? Yes. It's still Ford, isn't it? It says Ford on the top, but it is a modern engine. It's no longer the original V8. Carry on trawling around the public parking area. That's MGB. Rally prepared 205 rally, appropriately. Very, very low bends. An E30 BMW, 3 Series. Rally prepared Mark II. Mardi Gras Limited Edition Peugeot 205. 205 GTI. Is that the 1.9 with the bigger wheels on it? It's a 1.6. I thought those wheels were on the 1.9s, but I don't know. Yeah, a lot of fun, aren't they? So what 911 have we got here? I can just see the Bath Fiat. What's that Herald over there? Got a replica 250 GT short wheel base. Many Ferraris. Just for added variety, I mean, obviously, I prefer, tend to prefer the older cars like this uh, early M3 and this, the Z3M. So, this was the M version of the Z3, and this is like the bread van type look, the coupe. Pretty wild, about 320 or so brake horsepower. Very Larry indeed. So yeah, let's keep looking for the older cars here today at Bista Heritage. Got a DeLorean, I think this is probably the one we saw driving in before with its gold wing door raised up. Funny enough, Back to the Future's on telly this afternoon, I noticed it in the TV paper before we came out. And many, many more desirable modern cars. But let's just keep going a little bit further up here because here is that Ferrari 412, four seat front engine V12 Ferrari. Most of these were automatic, but a few of them were manual gearbox. So what's this one? Oh. Well, it is a manual stick shift. Oof. It's a rare thing, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. It's quite unusual being a manual. Clearly it's been in a road test. March 2023. Yeah, I think these are quite an elegant car. They were sort of overlooked for a long time, but I think they're quite handsome cars. A bit more understated than many Ferraris, certainly the modern ones, for my liking, but I think that's quite a classy looking car. Especially being a manual. Yeah, manual. Still a lovely old Ferrari V12. Yeah, I can see a lovely old lorry over there. Let's go and have a look at that. Of course, this used to be an RAF base in the Second World War, RAF Bista, 
all manner of aircraft flew from here. And what's this old lorry here? That's nice, isn't it? That's more my cup of tea. A lovely old Ford. It's great to see all these old ex wartime buildings here being repurposed at Bista. It's the old hangar, it still smells of old aeroplanes, but yeah, this would have been packed with aircraft during the Second World War. Um, fantastic place, fantastic buildings, and great that it survived and found a new purpose now in the 21st century. In the late 1930s, early 1940s, one of my grandfathers was based here at RAF Bista early doors in the Second World War and flew Blenheims. Now I thought today, as we're here at Bista in the surviving buildings surrounded by them all, and it is also St George's Day today, and his name was George, so I thought it'd be highly appropriate that I brought his old dog tags. These are the tags that he would have worn when he was based here and elsewhere during the Second World War. G.W. Thompson, I don't know if you can actually see that, but those were his original RAF dog tags that he wore all the time throughout the Second World War, his time in the RAF. And these, what, 80 odd years ago, would have been here while he was serving with the Royal Air Force. So, and especially as it's St George's Day, I thought it'd be highly appropriate that these old dog tags come out of their box where they normally sit in a drawer, get some sunlight here down at what was RAF Bista. Let's keep heading over here. Interesting looking Bentley there. No stranger to modern Bentleys living not a million miles away from Crewe where they're built. But here there's some proper old cars. What have we got here? 911. Yeah. I met him here once. I'm in the chat. In this one, just 42. I mean, it'll do about the squash the put squash in the device. And then they just see the back there. Right, back to XK Power Jaguars and a glorious Mark 1 here, probably a 3.4, race prepared, yeah, 3.4. Switch that on and you'll just get the sonorous sound of that glorious straight 6 engine, probably through straight pipes. Absolutely gorgeous car that is. Isn't that just wonderful? Next to that, a nice little Austin 7 here. Have a quick look at the information board. Austin 7 Speedy. I think these came out after the Ulsters, if I remember right. It's got a lovely uh, plate on the back of this one. Is it? Yeah, it's really nice. Sensor. I noticed the BRM registration. Yeah, wow. Lovely, thing, huh? lovely letters, complete with the little serif on the bottom of the yeah. four. It's always nice to see. SL Mercedes, lovely one of the Pagoda roof cars, although this time without hardtop. Uh, XJ Series 2, we were talking about XJs back at home yesterday. This is a Daimler version on a PIA registration. So is it the straight six or the V12, I wonder? Let's have a look at the back. No clues there. We'll have to have a look at the rev counter because the V12 revs higher than the 6. Can't quite see the red line on the uh, Taco. Five and a half, so I suspect this is a 6. There should also be a V12 badge on the front, I think, if it is a 12. But 
I'm pretty sure that's a six cylinder car. <laughs> Next to this beautiful Mark 1 Cortina, we've got this equally gorgeous Zodiac again on slightly wider steel wheels. And look at that badge on the front there, RM. RM for Raymond Mays. He of Raymond Mays engine conversions for the six cylinder Zephyrs and Zodiacs in the 1950s. And of course, founder of ERA, English Racing Automobiles, before the war, and BRM, British Racing Motors, after the war. Oh, so a Raymond Mays tuned Ford Zodiac Mark II. What a Bobby Dazzler that is. Yeah, a couple more of the Mark II Ford Zephyrs here. So the Zodiac, the Raymond Mays car over there, that was the top of the tree. And then the Zephyr was sort of between the Zodiac and the console, which was a four cylinder car. But yeah, very usable classic car that is. Lovely, lovely cars. This would make a great long distance cruiser, just the sort of car I'm looking for at the moment. One of these would be great. So you've got a bench seat, column change, nice big boot for all your picnic and accessories. I like the exhaust tip. Who made this one then? Made by Radiot, made in England. Radiot, better known for their range of fog and spotlights back in the day, but nice to see this proper period exhaust extension here. It's all about the details. As well as the historic setting here at former RAF Bista, it's just the variety of the cars you get here. I mean, look at this. Some sort of support vehicle for a cycle racing team. Campagnolo, didn't they do gear sets for bicycles back in the day, or wheels. Yeah. So that's a 123 series Mercedes, early 1980s W123 car. Various engine sizes were available. I think most of them are six cylinder cars. That's great, isn't it? I'm not sure where my youthful assistant has disappeared to. He'll be filming something somewhere. Let's keep going and see what I can see parked over here. There's some lovely aircraft over the back there, we'll have a bit of a closer look at those in a minute. Got a Mark 1 Escort here. 3,000. Many louvers in the bonnet, someone's been at play there I think. The 123 Series Mercedes. A Mini Clubman. There's always places around here. What's this over here? AVG 779D. What do we have here then? A Matra. Wow. I could feel I'm sorry. I'm sorry for 50 quid. Yeah, I know. I've got the. I just made the worst Oh, yeah. I found it in Italy. Wow, here's a great old pickup or ute of some description. <coughs> Citroen Ami, glorious 66 Mustang notchback. Just parked here enjoying the spring sunshine. The weather forecast for today wasn't amazing. 
750 IL. I used to run a couple of those. TT Audi Mark 1 MX5. We approve of that. Mark Lane right hand drive. Some jazzy seats in this one. Over here we've got one of the XJ40 series XJ6s. It was the last car, pretty much, I think, that Sir William Lyons had any involvement in the styling of at all. Of course, by then he'd long since retired, but it was tricky to keep him. It was quite difficult to keep him away from the factory, which was his baby, really, for all his life. So he did, by all accounts, he did pop in to the factory from time to time. And he did sort of act as a sort of a part-time consultant on the, the final design of the XJ40. Like I said, the last car that he was involved with, I think. And we've got a Sunbeam Tiger V8. So what size are these? About 260 cubic inch, I think, aren't they? Same as the very first Cobras, if memory serves. This one's on a 64 plate. Bayshore Autos, Florida. And a great TR6, which I've got a feeling I've seen before somewhere. Have we seen, have we seen this before yeah, somewhere? Yeah. Left-hand drive? There can't be many left-hand drive ones with French lenses on them. No, well those are clip-on lenses for touring, but I'm sure we saw this somewhere recently, yes, we didn't did. we? Was it Race Retro or somewhere like that? It, I don't know. But yes, we don't. But these, are, these are those sort of Continental Touring clip-on Lucas covers that you put over your standard 7-inch headlights for touring on the continent, and that's what they're all about. It's a time when they have and over here we've got a Toyota Century, complete with Japanese plates. Quite a plush machine, complete with rear curtains. <laughs> Kill those net curtains in the back. An Aston DB7 here. And a glorious 3 litre Lagonda. Ooh, a drop head coupe version of the Lagonda as well. Rear hinge doors, very swish car. I like that. That would do, wouldn't it? That would do. That is, yeah, it's it's different. Yeah. different. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been because it's only four on the floor, so I would have thought it would be like some automatic. Mm. Now in this area, when we came to the uh, Sunday Scramble back in January, this was full of woodies and classic estate cars, but today, I'm not quite sure what the theme is, but there's certainly some pretty special cars. This huge, what is this? So what did you say this is? This is a Neo EP9, I'm pretty sure. It's as, it's as wide as a bus, isn't it? <laughs> it is massive. It's, it's huge. It's electric, it's worth having a look on the inside. Just is it? Much carbon fibre. <laughs> okay. Right, let's go and have a look for some older machinery. Right, it looks like a DTM Mercedes. These were pretty wild. That's that's quite neat. And the Vauxhall 3098, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think it's one of those. Beautiful vintage Vauxhall, the sort of car that the VSCC was even founded for. Almost for enthusiasts of cars just like this. Let's have a quick look on here. That's uh, just a list of events for the VSCC. Wow, what a beautiful looking engine that. Pro Drive prepared Subaru. The car I want to have a look at is the XJS at the back. That's a TWR prepared V12 XJS. Tom Walkinshaw Racing, TWR, prepared these back in the day, back in the 1980s, and these sounded absolutely wild. There is an old video that I did at the Pageant of Power at Chumley many years ago, and that's buried away on the channel somewhere. And it just shows one of these firing up and running in the paddock area and the noise from those straight pipes sticking out under the sills there from this much tuned V12 engine uh, it's just phenomenal the noise that these things make is just epic epic car mm. 
Over here, oh, let's go and have a look at this Bullnose Oxford, Morris Oxford, KM247, the registration. Not too many Cooper or Cooper S, it's a Morris badge version this one. I think we can see a badge down there, 1275. Yeah. That looks like fun. Proper nice 10 inch mini light wheels. Minis do look great on the proper 10 inch mini lights, I think. <laughs> Revised grille of the Mark II, slightly bigger than the Mark I. And another bullnose Morris here, this time it's the Cowley. Is it well, it's Shell Motor Spirit, that's where your two gallon petrol can would have resided. On the running board of this vintage Morris. I really like this. It's nice, isn't it? It's got one of the Pyrex Junior fire extinguishers for light car, so it's quite an early one. You can see the speedo drive on the front axle, no brakes, of course, on the front of these, and there's the speedo drive, big cog, little cog drive up to the speedometer so it's probably an aftermarket fitting possibly but either way that's how it worked all pretty basic but not much to go wrong really which is a, a good thing we like things that don't go wrong and there's the water temperature gauge being a fan of old wartime buildings that's another benefit or treat of being here we've got an entrance to an old wartime bunker there it's been closed off now but that's what that was all about Got a Speedster replica, 356 Speedster replica. And this mighty V12 machine is a Lamborghini Espada. Very wide, very long, very, very low. Very, very 1970s. Pretty wild looking car, this. What does it say? Espada Series 3, 1973. And by one family for over four decades was brought back to life over the last three months, having spent over 20 years in storage. Wow. What a great colour. That's nice, isn't it? That's a good colour for one of these. Espada. Right, let's carry on. GT3 RS. It's a hugely popular event this one. The Rover SD1, a three and a half litre Vitesse. On a B registration, so what's that, about 1984 or thereabouts. Oh yeah, quite a handsome looking car this one I think. All these lovely old buildings, a perfect backdrop for a classic car meeting like this. Over here we've got a Marcos. Early ones of these had a Volvo engine in the four-cylinder Amazon engine. Later they switched to Ford. So this has got the three-litre V6 Ford engine in it. If you know your Triumphs, you'll recognise these bonnet catches because these are off a Triumph Herald or a Spitfire, the M because Michelotti did the design, the body design, for the Herald and the Spitfire, hence the M on there. So that's where that came from. Great car. I've got a Ferrari here. What's that, a 308, is it? Yeah, a Dino 308 GT4. Nice car. Not, yeah, it's quite simple, isn't it? Elegant, simple, not too in your face. That's a good thing. Morris Minor Convertible. <laughs> I like the 
Well, there's a great selection of 911s, old and new here. 911s, 912s, etc. Some standard, some resto modded, like this one. But look at this huge station wagon here. This is what really catches my eye. What an epic car that is. What's that, a Mercury? All of the wraparound side screens on these wagons. That's something we aped in this country, but the F-Type Vauxhall Victor Estates also had the curved rear side windows and the Humber Hawk Estates. So that's something that did transfer over here in the late 50s and early 60s. It's a Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. What a car. And it looks so original as well, it's not been tarted up unrestored, just preserved, different wheels, but otherwise looks really, really original, complete with that roof rack on the top as well, which we approve of, because we like old roof racks for some reason. Oh yeah, Mercury Colony Park. It's pillarless as well. How many estate cars were pillarless? What a wild looking car this is. And there's a bit of information on the screen here, it's for sale. 1957 Mercury Colony Park 9 passenger pillarless station wagon. Another stag with hard top. Great old 64 Land Rover here, a Series 2 or a 2A. Restored. Looks like a really nice, useful bit of kit that is. Look at the winch on the front. Proper Land Rover branded winch, the Land Rover Mark II. That's great, that. XK140, a drophead coupe. They did the roadster, then the drop air coupe was also a folding roof, but a more substantial roof, more plushly trimmed, etc. And the J in the lamps there for Jaguar. 1967 Mercedes SL, Triumph 2000 Mark II, quite an early Mark II. Big old Citroen DS, 1971 or thereabouts. Sunbeam version of the Arrow series cars, the Hillman Minks and Hunters, that kind of thing. But this is a fairly rare Sunbeam. Not original wheels, but rare car. Old supplier dealer sticker in the back window. Looks like the original sticker. Bit of yellowing on it, so it's probably not a repro, it looks like an original one. But yeah, quite plushly turned out these were. This was kind of a rival, I suppose, for the Ford Cortina. 1600E, the executive beauty. Next to that, an Alvis. So, what's this? A TD21. That's the first series car, the first of the TD21s, I think. They did do a revised version slightly later, which had, if I've got this right, the later ones, the slightly later ones, have got lamps set in there as opposed to the grills on the early TD21s. The later cars had aluminium skin doors these cars if this if i'm right in saying this is one of the earliest td21s they had steel skin doors and they were a lot heavier and as a result they sometimes tend to sag a little bit when you open the doors they can just sag a bit because the weight of that huge long door and there's ash framing behind that panel work there so that's just something to check so i did read up a little bit about these last year yeah, it's a really elegant car and I mean, no cars, no old cars are cheap, but relatively speaking, these are still quite a good buy. The convertible versions are a lot more expensive, but these fixed head cars, which I think actually look better, probably half the price of the open top cars. This great little Fiat 500 here, and a very grubby Bentley. Oof, that looks like it sees a bit of action. Beautiful Bristol 400 here. I have to keep talking because there's some music playing, but yeah, these are gorgeous. These are one of the earliest Bristol's built post war. A stunning bit of kit. You can really see the aircraft factory, the company lineage, in the streamlined shape of these Bristol 400s. Absolutely stunning car. We've got a 66 E type alongside that. 
Series 1 or 1.5 and, and then an M635 CSI that's the M version of course of the 6 Series Coupe We've got a Z4 alongside designed by Chris Bangle not everyone really liked all these strakes when the, these were first introduced but some people are warming to them now and there's the XK142 we saw before I mentioned the drop top versions of the Alvis TD21 and here is one 416 CKR Again, a lovely handsome car, but what's this here? Something American, a Dodge 6, yeah, it's a late 20s, uh, about 19, yeah, late 20s, it's probably Australian, yeah. <laughs> Looks like it, someone has fun with this, don't they? A bit of trialling, probably, looking at the mud on it. It would be a nice big six cylinder, very torquey engine, I would have thought, in these, but yeah. A great old car. We've got the Alpha Holics modified GTA here. Beautiful little uh, Alfa Romeo. Of course, there are many, many businesses here at Bista Heritage, and many of them open their doors and wheel out some of their wares at events like this. And here we've got a glorious pre war Riley. That's very swish. Here, some beam Talbot. Mighty Allard, V8 side valve, Ford powered Allard. Oh, and a Renault Juva Catra. Oh, no, it's not. It's the Opel Cadet. It's very, very similar looking. The front is very similar to the Renault Juva Catra, but that's the Opel Cadet. The sides are very different. If I'd seen that first, I would have known that was an Opel, but wow. Some mighty rolls. What else have we got here then? Something mighty and American, I imagine. Lincoln. Wow. It's got a presence, hasn't it? Left hand drive. The Armstrong Siddeley. That's a handsome machine, isn't it? Mighty Armstrong Siddeley, 1930s. I think I spoke about this one at the earlier scramble earlier in the year. Someone told me off for referring to it as an Armstrong Siddeley because I was told it should be referred to as the Siddeley Special. So I'll cover myself by saying both. But yeah, either way, beautiful pre war saloon. Lucas Trafficators. I love these. Stylized door handles. The Rolls Royce alongside. Two door Cortina, with Lotus badges. So that'll be a Cortina Lotus. Because only the Mark 1s were technically called Lotus Cortinas. The Mark 2s were Cortina Lotuses. They were actually built at Fords, whereas the earlier cars were assembled at Hethel, at Lotus's base there. We've got a 2CV here, late 1980s. Gotta have a quick look in the main shed here. See what gems are for sale this time. Got a Morris Mini Cooper S, race prepared MGA, Alvis Saloon over there, a bevy of motor bicycles. Look, no, like that's that, that Sunbeam was here in January when we came for the uh, do you remember that Sunday yes, Scramble. Most, most of this was in here. Yeah, I mean that's a gorgeous car, isn't it? I love that. Yeah, beautiful Alvis, complete with the hair mascot on top of the radiator. Bit of everything here. Yes, that little race, I've seen that somewhere. Let's carry on over here and see what gems are over here. We've got a Maserati Quattroporte for sale. What's this, a Porsche Boxster? But over here is what I want to look at, really. There's a glorious Mercedes on a ramp. Wow, Mercedes Coupe.
Lotus Cortina Mark 1, Austin Healy 100 of some description, that's 100M. So that's the competition oriented version. Got a 911 Targa. The Wowsers, a Bristol 403. Again, beautifully aerodynamic cars reflecting Bristol's aviation heritage. And for complete contrast, another M3, an E30 series BMW M3. Flared arches are the giveaway for the M3, as is the shallower rear screen, different boot lid and many, many other things. Many, many engine mods, four-cylinder engine in those M3s. Over here we've got Lotus Esprit Turbo. There's that silver Fiat 500 rolling along. Mercedes SL with hardtop, 911. It's another example of a car that's only improved its looks with the fitment of a hardtop. Beautiful car. <laughs> I like the look of this Datsun pickup, a Datsun 1500 pickup. There's a rare old girl. You don't see one of these every day. I wonder if this has always been here, if it's coming from Australia, it's right on drive. But it's a great little pickup. Appears to be in Rally Car Corner, Safari Rally Peugeot 504. I think we saw this down at Race Retro. If you've not seen the video yet, please check that out. Race Retro. Earlier in the year, 2023, next to that we've got Alfa Romeo. Mark 1 Golf GTI. And the Rally prepared MGA fixed head coupe. 1600. So it's got the 1600 B series engine. Earlier MGAs had the 1500cc version. And you can also get the twin cam. And they didn't make too many of those. They weren't hugely reliable, so they didn't sell in huge numbers, but the B-series power cars are a much easier bet to run. Much less of a headache to keep them going by all accounts. It is, isn't it? Complete with vent and roof. Borrowed from the Austin A35 and minivan. Just going to look in that building over there, the people seem to be peering inside. I'm not quite sure what's in there, but there's only one way to find out. If we wend our way past the Peugeot 504, the director's parking, see what's in here. I can see a little Fiat. There we go. There's quite a few cars in here, not been in here before. Wow. So what do we have here then? BMW 02, left hand drive. Austin Healy Frog Eye Sprite. Mark 1 Sprite. 948cc A series engine originally fitted to that. That could well have a 1275 in it by now. Got a TR, I think it's a 4A left hand drive. Another MGA, Lancia Delta Integrale, is that one of the Evo cars? I'm not quite sure. But we were working together. And a rally prepared Delta Integrale, a couple of E-types and an AC Tora, EXB346 pre-war, mid to late 1930s AC, could be a 1680, got an XJ Coupe on an M, nice midnight blue two-door Coupe. Complete with vinyl roof, they all had vinyl roofs, but many of the restore cars now have body coloured roofs, which do actually look a bit better. They're very swish Bentley. 911s. Lancia Fulvia, Zagato bodied Lancia Fulvia. Porsches. 
Ferrari. Watch this Lancia at the end here. Let's have a quick sneak round here. And have a look at this gorgeous Lancia. Last year, 2022, we did, we did a video when we attended uh, some of the rally stages for the Hero Rally early last year. And it was held at Ruthin over in North Wales and that was a lot of fun. So if you haven't seen that video yet, please go and check that out because uh, there were some great cars competing there and being given a bit of stick and sounded fantastic for the most part. Is that Ari Vatanen's signature there? Very agreeable DB5. What a beauty this, the Riley Manasco Pirate VSCC Hill Climb and Racer. Beautiful car, 1929. So it's not a bad office, is it? What an incredible car that is. A few Land Rovers here today, an early Series 1 here. Headlamps behind the grill. That's a nice early one, very original looking. Look at those old Perspex side screens. Look at this, a Peugeot 505 estate. The original cord interior. Three rows of seats, huge, huge car. How practical a classic is that? 1980s in date. Portuguese registered according to the number plate. A little P on the end there. Great car, I like the colour. It's a car for a lot of friends, isn't it? Yeah. Air Ministry. It's got the wartime crow's foot. Number 37. Well, let's head over this way and see what we can spot. Porsche, Porsche. Saab 900 Turbo Rally Car. <laughs> now, there was one of these in that, when I mentioned that Hero Rally that we went to have go and spectate at last year in Ruthin. There was one of these in this colour taking part, so I'm guessing it was probably this car. Next to the Saab, a Daimler. Is it a Conquest or a Century? One of the two. A Conquest Century, yeah. So this was a slightly modified version of the Daimler Conquest, but pretty much similar to look at, as far as I can tell. So I'll look over here, various Porsches, many, many Porsches. Lovely old corrugated tin hut over there. Master RX-7, the rotary engine car. And over near the fire section building, we just nip over here, just one of the many preserved buildings here at Bista Heritage. We've got this Morris LD, Skinner's Union. This belongs to Berlin, who now own the rights to SU for the carburetors, fuel pumps and so on. I think they've got a number of preserved vehicles, including this cracking LD. Skinner's Union, SU. 
SU was one of the sponsors of the Alfa Romeo that the big old Dodge at home used to carry, hence SU on the back doors. Beautiful little Riley van. There we go. 1935 Riley Kestrel van. You can see why old vans and lorries and such like make such great promotional vehicles. Especially if you're in the heritage game. An old, old van like this would be just fantastic to advertise with. I love the shape of the rear windows and the back doors. And the Riley bad shape, the diamond. The sun is continuing to shine, the sun shines on the righteous, so they say. Got some pit specials up in the sky, and here a Ford Granada Coupe, a 2.3. Appear yeah. to be an orange car corner. We've got the Granada there, the Scimitar, the Scimitar GTE, a pair of Datsun Z cars, so what are these, 240Z or 260Z? I can never tell the difference, I'm guessing 240Z. 240Z, I think the 260Z, the reverse lights were here, I think that's the difference. I'm sure there are many other differences. But there we go, and there's another 240Z. Is this one of the Samurai cars? Samurais were the souped up versions of the 240Zs back in the 1970s. I don't know if that's one of them, but either way, it's a fantastic looking car. Straight six engine. Another lovely old Bista building there. All these original window frames and many many wheels and tyres stacked up in there. MGPB it says. Right, got a classic rangey. There's that, that uh, Volvo 240 estate that came in before. Oh, well, we've seen a few Mark IIs, no S-types yet, or no 420 so far until now. This is the Jaguar 420, there was a Daimler 420 as well. So this was like a slightly updated version of the S-Type Jaguar with the S-Type's independent rear end. The Mark II didn't have the independent back end. But yeah. And they don't but like unlike them. the S-Type, which the S-Type was sort of similar to the Mark II at the front, the 420s have a much bluffer front, which was a sign of things to come, i.e. the first of the XJ6s that came along in 1968. So this was an interim car. Um, this one's from 1967. Yeah. Yeah, lovely set of badges on there, but this is an early 67 car, 420. Oh yeah, it's a lovely car. I just prefer, I think, the curvier front of the S-Type, that's all. But still, yeah, there's no, no harm in that. 944. And then we've got the Morgan Works building there, here at Bicester. Many, many Morgans. And here. An SL, a 1967 Mercedes SL Pagoda with the Pagoda hardtop this time. We saw an open top car before. So you can see the Pagoda roof. I mean, in the background, a lovely old concrete water tower. Keep walking over here, just everywhere you look, cars parked all over the place. It's all really nice and informal, which is good. Well, it's not quite the same when you've got cars just all in lines behind ropes and you can't really get close. That's not so much fun. 
but this is way better. What a beautiful car. This is coachwork by Touring. M registration Volkswagen Beetle on the end here, next to its younger cousin, the Carrera S. There are all manner of classic car and vintage car related businesses here at Bista Heritage. Car preparation, car restoration, car sales, classic cars for sale. Just an incredible place and it's great that so many of these businesses have opened up today just to show off what they do. We've got a 911 here or 912 perhaps, mid restoration, XK120, bonnet off, bit of mechanical work. Got a Mark 1, 2.4 or 3.4 over here. I'm not quite sure what this is in the foreground. That's an Aston in the background. Is that? I can't remember what that was called now. But yeah, single seat Aston, DBR4 perhaps. And here, a Jaguar D Type 207 RW. What a beautiful car that is. It's a long nose D Type. We also had the shorter nose versions as well. This is a long nose with the wing on the back. What a glorious car that is, a genuine, as far as I can tell, genuine Jaguar D-Type. Fantastic. There's a Ferrari 250 alongside. Let's keep walking up here then, past the Morgan building. A couple of fantastic Mercedes bins. I do like I do like these stacked headlight cars. And at the end here, BMW Z1. A very weird little sports car with the doors drop down into the sills. Over here we've got a very handsome 5 Series BMW, one of the E28 Series cars. Ran a couple of 535i's back in the dim and distant past. This is an M535i, so it should have a dog leg, is it an auto, is it the manual cars had a dog leg gearbox? So this is an auto. Yeah. Very handsome car indeed. Lovely sharp nose front on this era of BMW. Compared to what they're making now, <laughs> it's like night and day really. There's this Toyota we saw as we were walking in before. What? I wonder what the story of that is. Another 5 Series E28, but this is the daddy, this is the M5. About, now let me think, it's about 286 brake horsepower thereabouts. Big straight six. Now, as to the colour. Zinnabar red, perhaps. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that, but beautiful, beautiful sharp red colour. Of course, as we look at this glorious Aston Martin, the question you're all asking yourself is, where was that car first registered? Well, fortunately, I've got my iSpy car numbers with me, and if we flick to the PA page, we will see that PA is a Surrey County Council registration. So there you go, that Aston spent its early years driving the roads of Surrey. Handy little books, these. Just love the fact that all these old cars are just parked under the trees. Looking fantastic. Got a Beetle here, very, very low Beetle. And a Rover P5B Coupe, slightly lower roof line than the saloon. Still a four door car, but that's the P5B Coupe. Differences compared to the P5 3 litre that came before. Well, the 3 litre doesn't have these extra fog lamps here, and the badge is also slightly different. There's a larger black and red and silver coloured badge there on the six cylinder earlier cars and the V8s 
it was revised into what you see there. But yeah, beautiful car, three and a half litre V8 engine, originally a Buick design, a Renault 5 Turbo. It's one of the rear engine cars, similar to the Group B rally cars that they rallied in the 1980s. Most often you see the Turbo 2s, so you don't see the Turbo 1s all that often. Yeah. Just like our 4CV rear engine, but there the similarities end. Oh, bonkers looking Thunderbird, Ford Thunderbird. I love how they chose to have rear hinged rear doors. A beautiful 900 turbo, three door, 16 valve turbo. What a cracking looking car, that is beautiful, bright red with a black lower cladding on the bodywork, which was a sign of the 16 valve cars initially when there was both eight and 16 valve versions on sale. But yeah, that's a very sharp looking car indeed. I would have one of those in a heartbeat. Over here, next to a Mark II Escort, is this fantastic little Panhard, 1967 Panhard, left-hand drive. Well, I mean, the, the Panhard factory, they used to assemble the 2CB van. Um, so, uh, hi guys. Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, RS 1600 i MGB Roads, they're behind the glorious Saab Turbo. Bonnet up, showing off the B-Series, or is it? No, it's a V8, a V8 conversion. Mercedes 190e, great solid, very usable cars they are. Intriguing Ford base pickup here. Looks like it's a Model A cab or Model B, Model B radiator cowl, presumably V8, MGR V8, and hot rodded pop. I don't think I'll bother asking you what car you would take home from this particular video because there's just so much selection here. It's fantastic, this gorgeous Elan Plus 2. Probably have one of these before a normal Lotus Elan simply because I could fit in it, I think. <laughs> DB, another Aston Martin, DB6, Vantage. That's cool. Beautiful car. Rover 3.5S, that's the manual gearbox version of the V8 P6. Replica Cobra, nice alley bodied car. 427 engine. I must say, this is one of the best replicas I've seen. Yeah, 7 Series, got an E38 7 Series. Oh, it's got the uh, yeah, arm crash. Yeah. Bonnie Lot Ford Fiesta here, 205XS. XJS convertible. And a 911. Fairly early midget. Hot rodded Ford, but what's this MG here? Very long bonnet. So I'm guessing is this a Magna perhaps? Hmm. Whatever it is, it's a beautiful looking car. Very long bonnet. Let's have a look at the information. F type. Believed to be the original show car from the Olympia Car Show. For sale. Ooh. Not sure I could run to that. 
Wow, isn't it beautiful, that interior? Look at that gear change selector. It's a beautiful little car. Well, Do you approve? Certainly. We like a nice period food delivery van or retail van and here we've got a Morris J2 based coffee van. Wowzers. That's rare, 1964. You could get a Morris version with this grill which is the Morris J2 and there was also an Austin badge version called the 152 which had a slightly different front end on it but it was otherwise the same vehicle. No shortage of demand for food here today but let's go and find some more cars to look at. Now this is a fantastic vehicle, this is one of several vehicles with trailers that were built as mobile cinemas, like information vehicles for, I think they're produced by the government, if memory serves, but yeah, what a great old thing that is. It goes around the country showing all sorts of different films and things like that, so it's great that it survived and is still in use. Restored in 2010. It's actually based here on site at Bista Heritage. Just going to wander back to the car and have a quick bite to eat, but not before looking at this XJC, another two door coupe version of the Series 2 XJ. Very sharp and all over yellow. Then we've got a Roland Garros limited edition Peugeot 205, Ferrari, and over here a Volvo 122S, four door Volvo Amazon 122S. Possibly used for a bit of club rallying. Or if not, it's certainly be ideal for it. Great car. 1966 Mini Light wheels or Mini Light style wheels, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, fantastic. It's got overdrive gearbox, it's got the extra lever on the side of the steering column. One's for indicators and one is for the overdrive gearbox. One's for the overdrive gearbox. Alongside that, I've somewhat modified. <laughs> Mark II Jaguar, but not any old Mark II Jaguar. This has got the supercharged V8 out of the XJR. Yeah. I parked in the shadow of this huge hangar on a surprisingly warm, surprisingly sunny day on the Sunday Scramble for April 2023. And here's that DeLorean. Was this the one we saw driving in before, or is it a different one? I'm not quite sure, but it's a pretty wild looking car, brushed stainless steel bodywork and the PRV V6 engine handling by Lotus, Colin Chapman's company had a fair bit of input into the, the handling and the chassis of these cars. Next to that we've got one of the squared off tailed Alpha Spiders, Skyline GTR, the mighty Volvo. Interesting MGB GT sitting very high off the ground. Rally. Yeah, it's obviously with rallying in mind. A little Cinquecento Sporting, a little Fiat. The original Cinquecento, the Fiat 500. This one on an L plate. ED. Oh, where's ED? I can't remember. I should have a look at my little book, really, shouldn't I? But maybe not. And the Scooby Doo on the end here. Over here. It's quite an early discovery. Looks like it needs a little TLC. This is a fairly early example of the Discovery One. 300 SL that we didn't see before, one of the R107 series SL Mercedes. Well, as we head back towards the car for a quick bite to eat, we'll just have another look in the public parking area to see what arrived after we got here. We've got an MGB GT V8. Quite a late Morgan, 02, 2002, Series 2 E-Type Fixed Head Coupe. Got a Porsche 924 on trade plates. BMW 2002, MG Midget Rubber Bumper Triumph Power under that bonnet. Another GT, W126 Mercedes S-Class. I like those wheels, are they AMG or Zender or somebody? One of those 1980s tuning companies. Three series, 
of the stacked headlight Mercedes saloon. Well, let's go and have a quick look on the back row over here. Don't want to miss these out, do we? There's many more cars over there as well in the distance that have come arrived since we were here before. We'll just have a quick scoot round. It's a yellow Healy, an MGA fixed head, six series. SL, another SL. Wowzers. Is that an Ali bodied 120? Often the Ali bodied cars, the early cars, have the separate side lights on tops of the wings. On later SK120s, that was in steel and fared into the front wings, but the Ali cars tended to have those separate housings. So that could be an Ali bodied car. And here we've got an XK140 fixed head coupe. You can see the difference in the grille, more slats on the grille of the 120 compared to the 140 that came along later. These had really big bumpers on them as well. And over here, Citroen Diane. Of course, related to the 2CV. And then there's the van version as well, the Acadian. What's that on a K plate, 1971 or 72? So there's a little Nissan 911 and a split window V dub. Well, let's return to the back row for a minute. Audi Quattro there. 911 the 46 Coupe 3 Series. Somewhat lowered Mark II Golf 4 door, or 5 door I suppose. Healy 3000. Mini, another eye-catching, eye-popping Delta Integrale here. Very appropriate registration. On the end of this row, what do we have here? An Aston Martin DB4. Wowzers! We've seen DB5 and DB6 already, and the single-seater, but the DB4. Wowzers! That is one incredible-looking car. Absolutely. Oh, I would, yes. I think these are stunning cars. Absolutely gorgeous car that is. If your car is here somewhere but doesn't appear in the video, my apologies. Between us we'll try and cover as many of the cars as we can, including this fantastic two-door Amazon. But you turn around or you just look where you were an hour ago and the cars have changed, cars have moved around so uh, it's very difficult to try and include everything in the video but we'll do our best Bonnie little 924 first Capri that we've seen today Dolomite Sprint, 16 valve drive Dolomite Sprint RS2000, I guess they were rivals back in the day We we're meant to be going back for a coffee at the car, but I couldn't resist having a quick look at this Model A. Nice four-door saloon, complete with luggage rack. Really good usable vintage car, excellent spare support on these. 3.3 litre, four-cylinder engine. Very, very usable car, really popular in VSCC events. Choice of suppliers for bits here in the UK. So if you're thinking of going vintage and an Austin 7 is just a little bit too small, you could do a lot worse than buy a Ford Model A. What do we have here in a nod to Bista's uh, military past? We've got an Austin 8 Tilly. Wow, that's a rare old girl. Based on the Austin 8. That's a rare car, that is. Standard also built their own version of this, as did Hillman and probably one or two others. All the gear in the back. An old London taxi, based on the original Austin FX4, but yeah, it's quite a late one, that's a fair way. But still has Mark II Austin 1100 rear lamps. <laughs> it's interesting. 
interesting facts. A nice Mercedes 220 on a J. What's that about 70? About 1970, isn't it? Is it? Basking here in the sun, we've got a grand old Morris Marina Super Estate. Good heavens, complete with period roof rack. Period beach wind deflector up there. All ready to unravel and protect you from the worst of the elements in sunny Skegness or similar. Hey? Yeah, the Oh, the wedgie. Oh, I'm just admiring this marina. Wolf race, period wolf race, alley wheels. That's great, isn't it? Twin carburetors. VW square back VW over here. It's on an F plate. Don't die, it's cool. You like that, don't you? Yeah, I really like these notchbacks. I think it's the roof rack that makes it myself, but yeah, I like those. Uh, it's, just, it's one of my favourite looking VWs. Yeah, it's an interesting alternative to a Beetle, isn't it? Yeah, I'd probably have one of these. Like yeah, Type 3. Yeah, Type 3. Yeah, yeah it's cool, that is. Right, let's carry on over here. Got a replica of a Porsche Spider, is it? Is that the 550 yeah, Spider? Yeah, replica of the 550, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A mighty Bristol over here. Oh, right, there's a load of Lambos over there I missed before. Yeah. Very distinctive styling. We saw the lovely Bristol 400 earlier on and the 403 <laughs> Granada. Um, but yeah, things was a, but was certainly a lot boxier by the 1970s and the 1980s. Something of an acquired taste. But impressive, nevertheless. This is a nice one. I think this is a 411. Yeah, that's more my thing, really. I think it was these that had the spare wheel hidden behind that panel, and I think that sort of hinges up, and the spare wheel's hidden under there. What a great bit of kit that is. Oof, magnificent little Bugatti here. Keep with the original French Marshall lamps. of Lotuses here in a fairly early Esprit. It was one of the Essex branded cars over there. Essex being a sponsor of the Lotus F1 team at the time. Another Esprit over here. And a bit of Italian exotic of the Lamborghinis. Countach 5000. What a wild car there. And a gorgeous Miura. Wow. That really is quite something. Let's put it in and see. It's an interesting little uh, prototype, experimental development, test development car. I think it's an Austin, something Austin. Austin Zander, that's it. That's right. I read something about this before we came. That's the point. I'm not quite sure. We'll have a look at the information board in a minute. It's parked alongside a similarly wedgy Triumph TR7. Let's have a look at the information board for this one. 
the 1969 Austin Zander on loan from the British Motor Museum. A mock-up made of glass fibre reinforced polyester over a wooden structure. Well, carrying along along this British Leyland corner, we've got a Leyland Princess on Stag or Triumph 2500 wheels. Isn't that one of the upper market ones with the I can't remember what you call them, trapezoidal or something like that, headlamps as opposed to the circular lamps. Yeah, it's got a posh one, it's got a Webasto style roof, vinyl roof as well, very plush interior, automatic gearbox, radio mobile 8 track player, all the mod cons for the 1970s motorist, a 2200 HLS, top of the tree. Of course, despite the shape, the shape you would think it maybe is a hatchback, but it wasn't. It was just a little boot. There's the boot. This bit here, from there, well, about there, down to here. That's a lift-up boot. The Ambassador that came along later did have the full hatchback, but the Princess had to make do with the boot lid. We're liking these period Unipart Princess mud flaps as well. Great little detail. Next to the Princess, we've got an Allegro, a four-door Allegro, quite an early one on a P. Oh, so here's a red one. Here we go, a Hustler, a six-wheel Hustler. What a bonkers looking vehicle that is. Nice bit of joinery going on here in the body of this car. Yeah. I reckon they're Rover Dormit. Are they? One of the Lagondas, the Wedgie Lagondas, William Towns design. That's a V8, isn't it? Yeah, it's the Aston V8. What do we have here? 1932 Morris Miner, same year as our little two-seat miner that's in the garage. Same radiator because the radiator changed every year or two. But this, these uh, little uh, raised bits there, I suggest probably about 1932 or thereabouts. We used to have a saloon, we used to have a 1934 saloon which we ran around in for quite a while until we outgrew it. Similar shape to this one but in quite nice condition. This one clearly is uh, needing a little bit of love. Wonder what the future holds for that one. Will it be restored as a saloon? Probably not. I imagine it'll end up being a special of some sort as a side valve engine. Forerunner to the Morris 8. Yeah, I'd be surprised if anyone actually retrieves this old body. But you've got a chassis there, you've got a bulkhead and a scuttle. You've got the radiator and the grill, all the axles are there, so it's the makings of something. In fact, I think the M-type midgets were based on the contemporary Morris Miner as well, so maybe it'll end up being built up into a little sporty special of some sort. There's that Alan Plus 2. Next to the uh, little Morris Miner, We've got a work in progress, Alvis. Oh, it's a handsome thing. Bit of work going on with the hood. Yeah, so I've got a two seater in here. I love the door trims. Very swish. Real proper quality car. And I'm guessing, yep, yeah, we've got the little dicky seat. Or as the Americans say, a rumble seat in the back. <laughs> See what we can see. There's a huge turnout for the Sunday scramble. The weather is incredible. All the forecasts showed rain, 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 and more rain, but mercifully, we haven't had that so far. Overland. Glorious overland. Look at those headlamp lenses. How bonkers is that? We had some wow. 
black so many of the little buildings here at Bicester Heritage have been repurposed and now find themselves home to vintage and classic car restoration experts, including this trimmer. There's a vehicle upholsterer here, Harry Fraser, in the old engine test house. Love the Austin 7 here. If you saw the video that I put together of the Sunday scramble here at Bicester back in January of 2023, you remember we showed this, this incredible Armstrong Sidley mobile bar. Um, Got a Carmichael fire appliance here. <laughs> now this followed us in this morning. I've got a feeling this is a Stutz Bearcat. Beacon Motor Lamp Manufacturing Company of Cleveland, Ohio, the Beacon Signal. Halt. <laughs> is it for sale, is it? Oof. Have a guess. Stutz. I don't know, 120. Right? A two room copy of the original body. Hmm? It's quite a thing, that, isn't it? This is a Norris special. We've seen this on the hill climb at Prescott and places like that. Check out the Prescott videos that we've done, the Loughton Park and such like, if you want to see a bit of footage of this car in action. Very well known car based on the Fraser Nash. <laughs> now we've got some nice wheels in here. A bit of class in here, mainly Bentley as far as I can see. So what's that, a three litre, I think? Very swish looking motor cars in here. <laughs> Huge supercharger hung off the front. Great little Triumph Base special here. <laughs> Next to this Dodge Challenger, I've got a huge selection well, vintage cars over here, starting with what appears to be an Ulster. I think the official name for these was the EA Sports. And the little special that I bought many years ago, I found in a shed where it had been sat since 1959, had a modified original Ulster body, looked just like that. But yeah, what a great little car. That is super original. We like original. Next to the Austin 7 Ulster, we've got a Fraser Nash. You can always tell the Fraser Nash is because they have chain drive and very narrow rear axles, much narrower than the front end. These are super popular in VSCC or Vintage Sports Car Club events. Very competitive cars. Yeah, yeah. Well, 1934 Fraser Nash TT Rep. <laughs> Next to the Fraser Nash, we've got a very aristocratic looking Bugatti. I'm going to have to look at the cheat sheet to find out exactly what it is. It's a 1930 Bugatti Type 44. Produced January 1930. <laughs> Yeah. 
next to Bugatti, we've got this 1934 Aston Martin. And next to that, the 1922 Aston Martin TT2, Sergito. This lives very, very local to us. In fact, there is a short video of this car in our driveway two or three years ago. A lovely car, this pops up at VSCC events all over the place, including here back in January. Oh, great pair of vintage Aston Martins. What an incredible lineup. We looked at some of the cars over there. We've got this one here too, which is the Mark II Ulster conversion, 1935. But yeah, what a great selection of old Astons. Uh, what's that running over there? I think it's an ammo car. Certainly attracted the crowds that wonderful vintage Amal car. Over here we've got an Alvis, big old Alvis there, Citroen Traction of all. An Alvis Speed 20 Charlesworth Saloon 1936. Another lovely car. S Type Jaguar. All sorts, MGB Roadster, with a Land Rover hiding away over there, TT, a grey Fergie tractor. And a Ford Model A, another Ford Model A, fantastic, this time a Tourer. We saw the four-door saloon before, and this is a much-loved Tourer by the look of it, complete with Guinness bottle opener. <laughs> Excellent. I don't think we've been round here before. Oof, oh wow, there's an A40 Sports over there. Let's go and have a look at that. The home of the Austin J40. I read about this somewhere. So here's the Austin A40 Sports, this was based on the Devon and the Somerset chassis but with twin carburetors on that 1200cc pre uh, B series engine. But yeah, aluminium body by Jensen I think. Very nice too. This lovely A40 Sports belongs to the gentleman I had a lengthy chat with at Western Park. If you check out the Western Park April 2023 video that I uploaded recently, you'll see his magnificent A90 drophead coupe and we had a long chat about it. He demonstrated a power hood on it and so on. And uh, yeah, that was great to see and I didn't realise, but this is his A40 Sports. So that 1200cc engine is the forerunner of the BMC B-Series unit. Twin carburetors, the Devon and the Somerset only had single carburetors. But yeah, lovely car. Thank you so much. 
If you saw the video I did of the NEC recently, the Practical Classics Restoration Show at the NEC, you may well have seen probably this car, the NSU Sport Prins. It's always nice to see them out in daylight as opposed to in the uh, halls at the NEC. And behind that, a magnificent Merriweather fire appliance. Wow. Ex Morris Motors Fire Brigade. I'm sure they get through plenty of this stuff. Brasso. Plenty of brass to polish on this old girl. That's pretty cool. Big six on the side valve engine there. We've got the auto vac fuel supply. There's still quite a few cars we haven't seen yet. A 2CV, Beetle, MGC, Roadster. And again, a lovely big BMC six cylinder engine there. Nice champion plug caps. What we have over here, Austin 7 Racer. The remains of an Austin 7 saloon, which I'm sure at one point will be turned into another special. But you've got all the makings of a special there, even if the saloon body itself is beyond hope. It's looking pretty ropey, but I suppose it could be done. <laughs> I've been resting in the barn for 30 years. Well, they're going to restore me, so maybe it will be restored. Who knows? Bit of work going on on this Morris Mine 1000. <laughs> Pretty wild looking Porsche replica there. Another MGA fixed head. Very smart car indeed. We've got a bevy of wonderful Rileys here enjoying the Oxfordshire sunshine. God. I think that's a Riley Sprite. Lagonda here, I think it's a two litre. Another Sprite, Riley 12 4 Sprite. And GTD, more Rileys. New Mustang, and there's that Daimler Conquest Century we saw earlier on. Okay, here we've got a Singer 9 Sports Tourer. Let's have a look at the information. 1933. Newly restored 972cc engine overhead cam. Oh, very nice it is too. Next to that, an Austin 7 Special. And a Lotus Elise. Checked away over here, we've got a two door Vauxhall Chevette. Over here we've got a Daimler SP250 sharing off its Edward Turner designed 2.5 litre V8 engine. These must go pretty well. Fairly lightweight fiberglass body. In fact the other ones were very lightweight and my Jaguar took Daimler over. Some of the engineers actually had a look at some of these cars and they found the bodies did flex a fair bit so Jaguar did undertake a bit of work on these while they continued the production of the car for a little while. Same engine of course went into the V8 250 which was based on the Mark II Jaguar of course. 
by all accounts, the end result was actually a very nice driving car. Much lighter engine than the XK that went into the uh, Mark II Jaguar. Nice yeah. Very distinctive styling. And it's pretty out there for Daimler. Daimler more often associated with fairly stately saloons and uh, limousines. And then they came out with this, which was pretty wild. I like the little D cast into the num uh, lights around there. Over here we've got a very smart Shelby American AC Cobra. Now this isn't a real car, this is an original car. This was at the NEC just a few weekends ago. Boo 8 is the registration, I remember that. I think this is a 260 as opposed to a 289. It may not say anywhere. No, it doesn't. But I've got a feeling this had a 260 cubic inch V8 in this particular car. It's a fairly early example of the breed. And then before long they went to the 289. Looks like the Hustler's on the move. There's this little gonda behind it. A certain Jensen 541 fiberglass bodied big Austin engine big Austin six cylinder engine WXM 54 there we go Jensen West Bromwich A few cars have started to go, but still there are cars that I don't remember seeing earlier on, including this Bristol 400. We saw the maroon one before, I think, but wow, look at that. That's a real eye-popping colour, that is. Such a sleek-looking car. The Bristol 2-litre. I just think they are a beautiful-looking car. Got a converter in there for kilometres to miles an hour, so maybe a spot of continental touring is the, uh, the order of the day for this particular example of Bristol's finest. Yeah, this is a really nice Mark II. Grey, painted wire wheels, which we approve of. Cutaway, Coombs type rear arches. It's a 3.4. Paintwork looks really original on this one. Nice old AA GB plate on the back there. None of this modern UK business. 3.4, just look how original that paint looks. There's a few period accoutrement in the back window. Let's have a quick look, of which we approve. We've got an old shell map, Southern England. And uh, Johnson's Auto Kit First Aid Outfit. Yeah, I like that. Really original looking paint, slightly faded, just a little bit dull. You don't see these number plates very often as well, like with these sort of style of lettering. Yeah, it's a lovely original looking car that is. If it has been restored, it was a long time ago. It's just mellowed beautifully that has. Look at that Butlin's Car Club. 
badge on the front there. I've got a feeling this is going to be another one of those longish videos for which I apologise. I know some of these videos do go on a little bit. But once I've recorded cars, I don't really feel good cutting them out, you know. And uh, like I said before, I apologise if anyone's got their car on display here today and we didn't manage to squeeze it into either of our videos. What a lovely old cast plate there. Stunning old Rolls Royce. Not over polished or over restored, just slightly weathered. And it's just evolved to this point in time. Over the last 90, probably getting on for 100 years, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've got the axles down over here, and the spring is all the way down to here. Big old leaf spring there wrapped up. Keep the dirt out. Yes, <laughs> that's quite a car, isn't it? Just needs an old battery. <laughs> And it's huge, massive long wheelbase. If you can let me know what model of Rolls Royce we're looking at here in the comments, that'd be great because uh, it's a huge car. I guess if we look up the registration number, the Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club has a register of all known surviving Rolls Royces, as far as I know. So I'm sure if we uh, put NC841 into Google, I'm sure it'll bring up something. But yeah, what a cracker that is. Right, well, we're going to head now towards the public car park area just to see if there's anything we've missed. A few cars are starting to disappear now. There are a few gaps here and there. These two Morrises are still here, which is good to see. And the Morris Cooper, of course, three Morrises, in fact. But yeah, there are some cars starting to leave now. One or two gaps just here and there. Oh, yeah, the early minis. The what? Resto mod minis. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Let's go and see what's in the public car park and still here. It's about three o'clock, give or take. Nice Ferrari. The January Sunday scramble here at Bista was only till about midday, so we had to scurry around quite quickly to try and get everything in. But today's event is, should be running till about four o'clock, I believe. So it gives us just a little bit more time to have a look around, try and appreciate all the wonderful cars that are here today at Bista Heritage including this DB7, which I hadn't spotted before. It's actually a Vantage version, which was a higher performance version of the stock DB7. Here's an interesting one. Someone's made a pickup out of a 100E van. Good Lord. Well, not a 100E van. It's a Thames 300E to be accurate. But yeah, someone's cut that down. Done quite a neat job of it. Made it into a bit of a ute. Or is it a ute? No, it's a conversion, isn't it? Because you've got... Oh, there you go. You start out as an Escort. So the Escort was the estate car version of the 100E. <laughs> it was the estate car version of the 100E the body shell of which was based on the van, although the vans had two side hinge doors, whereas the Escort and the Squire estate had a split rear tailgate. So you had the rear one that drops down here, which is still here, and the upper tailgate, which would normally be there, is now over here. So that's quite an interesting little conversion based on a 300E, or rather 100E Escort. We'll get it right in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite dinky, isn't it? Lovely Bentley, an Audi 80 Sport, that must be quite a rarity now. Over here we've got an S-Type, so we saw earlier on that Jaguar 420 which was sort of the revised version of the S-Type but this is the original S-Type on a C-plate 1965. Morgan driving past over there. Yeah, C-Type, well, S-Type, not C-Type, S-Type. Really, really nice. This still has the traditional curvy front end. 
Um, introduced on Jaguars in the 1950s with the Mark One, the 2.4 and the 3.4 saloon. Yeah, lovely car. By all accounts, a better steer than the Mark II, but the Mark IIs are the ones that are still big money. These are slightly more affordable, although finding a good one probably isn't all that easy now. But yeah, beautiful looking car. You don't see these Citroëns in silver too often. They're always black, so this right-hand drive car, probably slough built, is a bit of a, just a bit of a change from the usual. But yeah, I really, really like that. Very smart indeed. It's like a silver sort of metallic. Is that the original colour? I guess it could well be. Five-speed manual in this particular V8 Rover. Well, I think we're going to head off as well. The parking area, the forward parking area is all but clear now. So I think it's time for us to start making tracks for homewards. Anyway, I appreciate this was the longest video, so thanks for sticking with it. Hope it was of interest. If you've got any comments on the video, please pop a note below the video. And uh, it's always interesting to see what you think about the cars that are featured in these videos. Please like and subscribe, and uh, there'll be many more videos along very, very soon. So, bye for now.